Let me give you three verses of Scripture that destroy this uh, supposed reprobate doctrine. A uh, little papist coming out, uh, calling themselves Baptists, New IFB, Stephen Anderson's little cult, and they came out with this thing called the reprobate doctrine. You know, somebody is turned over to a reprobate mind, they can't get saved. The blood of Jesus Christ is limited. Hmm, limited atonement. Huh, that's uh, total depravity. Hmm. But they're not Calvinists. They're against John Calvin. They just believe in a reprobate doctrine, which is essentially almost identical to Calvinism. But let's, let's look at three verses of Scripture, very easy verses of Scripture, that even lost people like Anderson's little cronies can understand. John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world of unreprobate people, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever of non-reprobate people believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, no, actually, there's no reprobate thing in there. Whosoever. Hmm. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. For whosoever of the non-reprobates shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No, it doesn't say of the non-reprobates. Whosoever. The vilest offender that truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Unless you're one of these little papists out there and try to say, oh, uh, sodomites out there, homosexuals, you know, uh, they're, they're reprobate. They've been turned over a reprobate mind. They can't get saved. It's so funny because, I mean, the thing's Calvinism is all it is. All right. Total depravity and limited atonement. Total depravity is that unconditional, or uh, not unconditional, um, unelect people, uh, if they're not one of the, you know, being un non-elect or whatever else, they can't get saved because it's total depravity on their part. They can understand that they're sinners and they can't understand salvation because God's just, you know, God created them for hell and there's nothing they can do about it. They can't get saved. So when they get up there before the Lord and the Lord says, depart from me, ye cursed, they say, yeah, <laughs> that's how you made me. You know, it's not the devil made me do it, it's God made me do it warped. So they believe in that, and then they believe in limited atonement. The blood of Jesus Christ is only there for the elect. So you get somebody that's into sex perversion or whatever else. Oh, sorry. Reprobate doctrine. You're a reprobate. Jesus' blood can't wash away your sins. You see, only certain sins, the blood's only good for certain sins. You know, of course, the ones that the, uh, you know, Baptists, they, they, they wouldn't commit such things and vile acts and whatever else. So the blood's there to wash away their sins. But other people that are vile sinners, oh, uh, you know, sorry, Jesus' blood is not good enough to wash away your sins. Even though it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A little problem for him there. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And there are so many verses we could go to. I mean, give me a break. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation for the non-reprobates. <laughs> not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Godly sorrow is not limited to certain groups of people, the elect or something like this. Anybody can have godly sorrow. But let's go to the passage. Romans chapter 1. Because it's so funny. I mean, just read the Bible and these, these lost little devils, they just their whole little thing just falls apart. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. Start there. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Um, well, if, if uh, we're going to talk about reprobate doctrine, well, then why don't we add in verse 25 there, changing the truth of God into a lie. People that mess with God's Word. Which is funny because Stephen Anderson and his followers do all the time. Prove that in other studies. But Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. 
receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. What does that mean? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. You know what uh, happens when you get into sodomy? And sodomy is a sin, according to Scripture. It's a very serious sin. It's an abomination. But so are lying lips, by the way. You put that in there. Um, what happens? There's all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases. Not to mention the fact that you're sterilizing yourself. You know, I think one of my favorite things is when I hear evolutionists, atheistic evolutionists, and they'll say, the God of the Bible is homophobic. Uh, well, if you actually want to look at it, uh, evolution theory is homophobic. Why? Because if evolution is true, that the weaker species, you know, basically die out, um, if there's a homosexual gene, that gene would eventually die out because homosexuals can't breed. So, um, you know, evolution is actually homophobic, but it's another issue there. So you see, verses 26 and 27, it's talking about sodomy, you know, homosexuality in the modern vernacular. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Semicolon. Oh, well, you know, the, so the reprobate mind people are verses 26 and 27. No, it goes on to identify what those things are that these rep people that have been turned over to a reprobate mind. Verses 29 down through verse 32 lists those things. And yet somehow all that the inner snake cult comes out with is sodomy. Sodomy is all that turns you over to a reprobate mind. They can't even read plain scripture, plain English here. Let's look at these things. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. You mean a whisperer can't get saved? They've been turned over to a reprobate mind. Whisperers can't get saved, according to the reprobate doctrine, wingnuts. And how about debate? full of envy. Our church has won more people to the Lord than your church has. Oh yeah? Well, we'll get you. Envy. Verse 30. Backbiters. Nothing like that in Baptist churches among the women. Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. So funny. These Andersnake zombies, they'll get up and they'll... they'll, they'll preachers and they'll say i'm proud to be a baptist amen amen i'm proud of you know are you proud of the reprobate doctrine <laughs> um being proud is a mark of someone someone who's been turned over to a reprobate mind boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And yet somehow these idiots, they'll go up and they'll take reprobate mind in verse 28, and they'll say verses 26 and through 27, the, two, the sodomites there that are being described, given over to a reprobate mind, and we should they're worthy of death in verse 32. Uh, what about verses 29 through 31? What about all the people that are listed in there? Hmm. Uh, well, they shouldn't get saved. Well, you know, as a funny thing comes up with Calvinism, you say, um, what if you witness, as a Calvinist, what if you witness to a non-elect person? How do you know that you're not witnessing to a non-elect person? Okay, um, let's just put the same thing on these Bathlicks. How do you know that you're not witnessing when you go out to somebody who's been given over to a reprobate mind? You say, well, if they sound like they're, you know, effeminate or something like that as a, as a guy. Okay, but what about the proud boasters, inventors of evil things, backbiters, deceit, malignity, whisperers? Hey, you know, you're going to witness to them. They've been given over to a reprobate mind. Right there. But keep reading. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. Hmm. 
But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? You know the thing that cracks me up about Anderson's cult, that he has little Stevie Anderson's cult? These guys are so militant, and, they're, and they just they love their documentaries that Paul Wittenberger's come out with. And yet Paul Wittenberger works for Hollywood. And Paul Wittenberger worked on a lesbian film. You can look it up. His IMDb page or whatever else the thing called. I've showed it. I've shown the proof of it. He worked on a sodomite film. And I've seen these Anderson Snake zombies too and things over the years, you know, studying them and whatever. And they will talk about Hollywood movies. They love Hollywood movies. Do you ever see the movie such and such? They'll do it in their sermons. They're talking about Hollywood movies. What's going on? They have pleasure in them that do them. Although condemn Hollywood and the, and the actions and things out there and all the sodomy that goes on out there and all the fornication and uncleanness, you know, verses 29 through 31, they'll condemn that stuff, but then they turn right around and they watch it just for entertainment. And yet somehow they're not worried about, um, you know, this reprobate thing. The reprobate doctrine applies to sodomites but not to the other things that we ourselves are guilty of. What a bunch of stinking hypocrites. And, you know, I understand why. It's because they're lost. But let me show you a little example of this. We have this uh, little little kid, Ben Ben the Baptist, you know, okay? And a uh, little whatever. And uh, he came out with a video recently. He just cracked me up. Uh, he was all offended at me saying that uh, there has to be, you know, Jesus didn't say by their profession you'll know them. He said by their fruits you'll know them. And this little Ben the Baptist, he said, fruits are actually words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Really impressive. But I'm just going to show you what he says about Jeffrey Dahmer. And then I'm going to play a little bit of Jeffrey Dahmer as well. Um, after Jeffrey Dahmer did all the horrible, despicable things he did as a serial killer that he was, he was a sodomite and a cannibal. And I mean, he was terrible guy and he got saved and I did a whole video on it I've read books about the thing that wasn't just a little Stone Phillips interview thing you'll see the little clip here but I did a whole study on the whole thing there um, Jeffrey Dahmer came to the end of himself he came to God as a broken sinner and God saved him I firmly believe he did after studying the whole thing out you know it wasn't just some kind of a profession of faith but these little wicked devils say that he couldn't get saved because he's been given over to a reprobate mind. Jesus' blood isn't there to wash away his sins. His sins are too many. And the blood just doesn't have enough power. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit of pink blood there or something like that. You know, that's not the blood of Jesus. All right, God's blood can wash away anybody's sin, regardless of what you've done. So let's watch these two clips. Which is why they're capable of doing things like, for example, Jeffrey Dahmer and the wicked, disgusting crimes that he committed. I don't even want to talk about it in this video because it'll make me throw up. There are certain people who can commit such disgusting acts that only an animal would think of doing because their conscience has been seared, because they're full of all unrighteousness, because at the end of the day, it all started with them hardening, hardening rather their own hearts towards God. It all started with these people Deciding to reject the gospel, deciding to hate the Lord. So God said, all right, fine. I hate you. You can no longer get saved. And he takes away that morality from them. Because that morality belongs to him. So folks, I want you to understand something. The reprobate doctrine, it's not just biblical. It isn't just the truth. It should also be a call to action. People who read Romans 1 and understand these passages, if you're out there, don't just, you know, sit on your hands and do nothing. It's our responsibility as Christians to preach the gospel, not only to fulfill the Great Commission, not only to receive God's blessings, but also so that we can get potential reprobates saved before it's too late before they lose all sense of right and wrong, and before they're given up, given over to a reprobate mind, before they become totally and completely amoral.
Your dad has wondered about all kinds of things, from the medication that your mom was on during her pregnancy, to the fact that you were exposed to violent arguments in the home from an early age and continuing, to the possibility that he might have passed on some genetic propensity for obsession or violent behavior. Does any of that ring true to you? I can see why he'd wonder about those things, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all excuses because I didn't feel accountable to anybody. I didn't feel that I had to to uh, face what I had done ever. And uh, so you, you have, there comes a point where a person has to has to be accountable for what he's done. Can't go, can't go around making excuses, uh, blaming other people or other things. So I, I alone am the one who's responsible for what's happened. Let me ask, when did you first feel that, that everyone is accountable for their actions? Well, thanks to you for, for sending uh, that uh, creation science uh, material. Because I always, I always believe the, uh, the lie that uh, evolution is truth, the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from uh, the slime and uh, when, we, when we died, you know, that was it. There was nothing. So it, the whole theory cheapens life and uh, started reading books about how, that show how evolution is, is just a complete lie. There's, there's no... There's no basis in science to uh, to uphold it, and I've come to since come to believe that uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the true creator of uh, the heavens and the earth. It just didn't just happen, and uh, I have accepted Him as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that I, as long as well as everyone else, will be accountable to Him. Growing up, did you feel that you were accountable to your dad or to your mom? as the authority yes, figure in the house? Yes, I did. I mean, they, they didn't let me uh, run wild. They were, they disciplined me. And uh, so I felt accountable to them. But afterwards, after I left the home, that's, that's when I uh, started wanting to uh, sort of create my own little world where I could be the one who had the complete control, where I didn't have to... Uh, about anyone else's demands and uh, I just took it way too far. Lionel? At that period of time I had drifted away from a belief in a supreme being and I never as a result passed along the feeling that we are all accountable in the end. He owns us and that basic concept is very fundamental to all of us. You feel that the absence, at least for a while, of a strong religious faith yes. and belief for some years may have prevented you from instilling some of that in Jeff. That's right. Is that how you feel? Yes, I think I had a big, uh, big part to do to do with it. I mean, uh, if you don't, if a person doesn't think that there there is a God to be accountable to, then then what's, what's the point of, of trying to uh, modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges? Uh, that's how I thought anyway. And uh, I've since come to believe that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're the only true God. Nice, huh? Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 18. Notice just the, the anger and just the, Jeffrey Dahmer couldn't be saved. That's disgusting to say. How, how could he be saved? And, oh, you know why you're seeing that? Because you're dealing with a Pharisee. Self-righteous little hypocrite. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. I'm a Baptist. I'm proud to be a Baptist. Mm -hmm. Some of these, some of these little Baptists, they're little incubator babies. They've been raised in the nice, little warm Baptist little church that Daddy pastored and Granddaddy pastored before him. And they go to their little homeschool thing, and they go off to the little Baptist college, and they meet their little Baptist girl there, and they get their little Baptist marriage, and they have their little Baptist spawn, and it's just a little Baptist, Baptist, Baptist. They don't know anything about the world. 
I've talked to these guys, you know, and, and things I tell them about, and, you know, I used to struggle with this, and oh, I never struggled with that. I don't know what that is. Or, you know, they have no idea. They have no conception about anything outside of their little Baptist incubator little cage. <laughs> two, men went, two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican, government worker. <laughs> the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I thank thee, God, that I'm not like Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm a good man. Mm -hmm. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Have you gotten there as a Christian? You know, I'll say it this way. Have you gotten there leading up to your conversion when the Lord saved you? Or are you just saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I don't even deserve heaven. I don't, I don't, I deserve hell. I know I deserve that. If you send, if you say, I'm not saving you, I'm just going to send you to hell. I deserve it. I'm a dog. I'm just vile. I'm filthy. I just, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, you'll say it too after you get saved. Sometimes you'll just mess up so bad and you just say, God, be merciful to me. I'm sorry, Lord. You know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I, I just, oh, can't believe I did that. Yep. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house rather justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer was uh, humbled. Um. National headlines, he's there in court, the relatives of the people that he killed are screaming at him and everything else, and he's just there. And You can just see his downtrodden look when he's in, in the trial and whatever. And, you know, and again, reading the book about him, you know, and stuff, I mean, watch my video, and I went over the whole book, did a book review on it, of the, the guy that was actually going in and visiting him and stuff, and personal experiences with Jeff Dahmer. And just, it humbled him. It humbled him. And you can see it in the interview, you know, um, getting away with murder before, but then he got caught and his whole life changed. Prison, life sentence. That's what it took for him to realize that uh, time to come to the end of yourself there, Jeff. But a lot of these little Baptists, the little churches, they're never going to come to the end of themselves. Self-righteous pride. That's all that they have. Matthew chapter 21, verse 31. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him the first. Jesus saith unto them, here's the key. Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. I've met some real vile sinners in my life that got saved. And uh, they'll get on fire for the Lord. Why? This world doesn't have any kind of a thrill for them anymore. I'll go this way. This world doesn't have any kind of a thrill for them anymore. Uh, what is there to allure me? I've been there. I've done that. I've seen the movies. I've, I've fornicated. I've been involved in sodomy. I've this. I've, that. I've done the drugs. I've done the alcohol. I've, I've gotten drunk. I've been... I, I've been in fights. I've been people threatening my life. I've had divorce. I've had remarriage. I've had, you say, oh, but you can get saved and continue doing it. Are you kidding me? Why would I want that life anymore? I don't want this. I want this. I want that new life. There is no such thing as a reprobate doctrine. Okay. Uh, it is a invention of a bunch of closet papists. Because uh, again, you know, think about think about this whole thing. Somebody gets a given over to a reprobate mind; they can't get saved. Well, then, what's the point of letting them live? Dark Ages Roman Catholicism coming to mind here. You know, uh, this person is a. We've been given. We give them by a holy decree over to a reprobate doctrine. You know, and, and things anathema. We pronounce anathema upon them. That's what the Catholics did. What do they do? Burn up at the stake. Aren't you concerned for their soul? They can't get saved. They've been turned over to a reprobate mind. So let's just kill them. You see? 
That's what's really going on here. The new IFB movement is radical pre-Vatican II Roman Catholicism under the name Baptist. That's all it is. That's why they get so vicious and just so hateful of sinners that say, God saved me. They'll preach, you know, salvation is just belief. And yet you get some vile sinner like Jeff Dahmer that says, I believe. I believe Jesus died for me. He saved me. And they say, it doesn't work for you because you've been given over to a reprobate mind. So don't ever fall for this reprobate doctrine stuff. It is satanic with a capital S. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.